Welcome to Spaces Between. This is your host, Roy Candy, and with me today is Jeremy Howard. What's going on, man? Hey, party people. How y'all doing? It's nice Hi. to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm so excited to have you on the show, Jeremy. And uh, one of the things that I love is your – honestly, how, how, this is going to be a weird, interesting question right off the bat, but how did the Whoa. whole party people thing start? Uh, you you want to know? Uh, <laughs> I really want to know because I mean, when I was you used to be on a uh, crowd surfing, and you were always like introduced it. Hey, party people! I know that's like your thing that you start off with, but oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're a party guy, man. This is not okay. This is the story. Out okay. Um, the best way to say it is. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to think. Okay. So there's a couple songs in history that have that party people in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just cool little funky songs. But mm-hmm. whoop, there it is. There you and go. I like. I don't know why. I don't like that song. But I love the fact that he starts out the song, party people. And like everybody's like, oh. <laughs> And I just like that feeling. Like I love that feeling. Like when everybody yeah, yeah. gets hype. You know, it's just like, get you in the fight. You know, well, I'm not feeling like a party person. Well, you mm-hmm. are party people. Let's go. Mm-hmm. You know, like. So I like to start it out with a little bit of energy. You know, and it'd be welcome, welcoming. So it's like, hey, I'm here. You know, so hey, party people, what's up? That's you know, awesome. So, yeah. yeah, I. That's one yeah. of the things I love about all of your content is all the energy and stuff you bring to it. Um, if anybody yeah. doesn't know who you are out there, can you kind of tell us a little bit about like all the content you produce? I know you can produce your own stuff. You produce stuff with Man oh. versus Meeple. You do all sorts of stuff all over oh, board game media. Gosh. So I've condensed. I condensed down to some things. I started out as a blogger. Jumble mm-hmm. Plays Games. So it was jumbleyeplaysgames.com. Um, I still have the blog. I just haven't touched it in a while. But then I have my YouTube page, which is Jumble I Plays Games. And that's some stuff where I have review stuff. And then I also have like um, just a ton of things from uh, or, uh, like coverage from uh, cons. So like mm-hmm. when you see stuff from Origins and Gen Con and all that stuff, I post a ton of videos there. Um, I also have some stuff from Dad and the Dude there, mm-hmm. Kickstarter previews, and now all majority of my content is going to be through Man vs. Meepo, where I do uh, Kickstarter previews and a live show every Sunday for solo play. Um, oh, nice. And then I also just kind of do, I just kind of do live play stuff here on Facebook. Some people right. may have noticed that over the years. Yeah, I've definitely um, seen do, a lot of your live Facebook content. Yeah. So that was a kind of a move that I really kind of went with exclusively because I used to be with Board Game Revolution. That was a thing that I did. Um, Fridays mm-hmm. on Fridays, um, so I did like a full showcase for like an hour and a half, two hours. So now <laughs> I'm sort of used to that, and I like going back to that. So that's kind of what I'm doing on Sundays. And Man vs. Meeple is playing live solo play. So it's kind of a it's a niche thing. Um, I'm up against football. I'm fine with that because <laughs> uh, not everybody watches football. And uh, I gotta say, yeah. if there's an industry where you're going to be up against football, I feel like board gaming. You might have a better shot than some I other industries. A- I have a great shot. That's what I'm <laughs> I have a great shot. The numbers say so. <laughs> so. The numbers say so. I do okay. So I'm fine with that. That's yeah. awesome, man. But it's a little bit everywhere, man. It's a little bit everywhere. I show up on a lot of podcasts whenever people mm-hmm. invite me. So you just hear me yakking. Um. So what do you prefer more, like the uh, the live play stuff or pre-recorded stuff? Like where do you think like your your favorite part of creating media is? Uh, so I, this is the thing. Pre-recorded stuff, I harp so heavily on misspeaking because <laughs> sometimes I, I always say I like I'm, you know, I'm a really educated man, but I like to use just common language. Like I just kind of, you know, whatever comes out of me comes out of me. So if you tell me this is a, you know, this is a a certain type of conquistador warrior, I'm gonna be like, you know, this conqueror dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> there you go. So I have to kind of be like, hey, you're conqueror, dude, plus you're militant, dude. I I feel like I'm the same way. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) you know, people are doing these previews. They're paying you money to do the previews. you got to make sure you, you know, use the terms that they would like. Yeah. So it's different. And there's a lot of recording and, you know, re-recording. So with live, even when you make mistakes, it's a little bit more forgivable because you're live. You Mm -hmm. know, and, you know, I had a... 
a live play of Gugong the, the, with the Panjun expansion mm-hmm. last weekend. And it was rough, and that's because I have prototype rules. Yeah, And for the sure. designer was in there. And, you know, there's pressure to perform, right? <sighs> but, but, yeah, it was intense. But, you know, you make some mistakes. But in the end, I've always told myself, as long as people know how to play the game and they see me having fun, which I genuinely, genuinely am because I would never pick a title that I will not have fun playing. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and you know, and the designers can tell that I'm, you know, enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's all right. That's that's how I see it. it it's I'm going to enjoy it. If I'm not going to enjoy it, I'm not doing it. You know? Yeah, so. I, I don't miss uh, reading prototype rules, that's for sure. <laughs> no. Yeah, and, it's, you know, and like, you know, people are coming in there to protect their game. They don't want anything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Back. I mean, that helps a lot, too, though, like having the designer there. You can be like, yo, uh, I read this sentence. Like, this sentence yeah. doesn't make sense, man. He's like, this is how it works. It's like, oh, that's what's that's going that, on inside your brain. He, he caught me in a rule. He caught me in a rule. He corrected me, and then he looked at the rules, and he was like, "Oh no, actually, that's wrong. I, I wrote that sentence wrong." <laughs> it was really funny. He like came back two minutes later. He's like, "Actually, no, that sentence doesn't make sense. Sorry." <laughs> like, I mean, that's you. gonna happen. I mean, I mean, the rules the are not done, fun. and the game's still being worked through. So. All right, but at the end of the day, like, it's is it fun or not? Do you get mm-hmm. an idea what the product is or not? That's what's most important, you know. Yeah. And do I like it? Well. Of course, you know, Google is one of my favorite games, mm-hmm. like ever. And here we are with this expansion. It's got modules. I'm learning them still. It's not like I, could, I mm-hmm. play Google on with expansions five times. They have multiple pieces of different modules and stuff. I just was like, let me just pick a couple and play. And <laughs> it was rough, but it was fun. You know, it was rough, but it was fun. That's all that matters. Fun. Yeah, we actually do like testing Tuesdays where we uh, we do the same thing. We pull open the rule book to a game, and these are actually published games. Sometimes there's also rules mistakes in those as well, which is less less easy to forgive. But yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. but yeah, we, we we struggle through it, and it's fun because then we like it gives us those chances to play those games to be reviewed in the future. Um, and and sometimes we get the designers in there too. It's like, yo, how does this work, designer? <laughs> And that's always the best. It's cool that the community is is the size where you can have designers stop by your streams or like have people come together. And it feels like that. I just I just love like the way the board game community can come together on different things and just be excited about gaming around the table together. You know. You know, and that's the thing. It's it's uh, you know, I've even had some publishers be like, "Is that a bet? You know, is it okay if I stop?" But I'm like, "Yes, it is." You like come in there, talk. You know, people want to hear your voice. And and to be honest with you, like. I've always even I've always said this uh, when I even when I do like previews I'll contact mm-hmm. the publisher and let them know hey like you know now's the time to really promote yourself as a person yeah yeah and not just as someone to hawk your stuff and I feel like the people who just do that organically always seem to have more loyal followers yeah for and that sure that goes into like their published games not Kickstarter games but oh, published yeah. games like John Gilmore I is mean, like absolutely amazing he's like oh, yeah, in yeah. the groups all the time or like Vince from Lucky Duck. You know, he sells his games, no question, but he contributes to everything, even the wacky yeah. stuff. Like he doesn't, you know, it's just he's everywhere. You know, like yeah, I feel like I, I feel want. like, I mean, if you make good games, that's that. I mean, you want to make good games, but also like right. having like the 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 like gamers in the community out there become a fan of you as a person, besides right. just a designer, makes people right. more like excited and interested in like supporting your stuff. Um, yeah. Honestly, uh, with this podcast, I, I haven't had a ton of designers and publishers on yet, um, but it's going to get there. But it's going to be more about like getting to know the designers and publishers, getting to know like what they like, what they don't like, what they're excited about, what they're passionate about, not just what the next hot game is and what the mechanics are. Because, I mean, you can get that anytime. Like If we can talk and get to know that person even more, then every time we see their name, we'll be excited instead of just excited for this next game, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, and honestly... I don't think they're always there for the sales pitch either. I don't know, yeah, 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 yeah. know what they're getting into sometimes, but uh, you know, it, it's part of that. It's almost like when you're on a talk, like when on one of those talking head shows and like our late night shows. But yeah, you just want to know the person behind there, or even if they do design games, you know, you kind of do want to know, like, where does this start? What's your mm-hmm. mental like? What's the process? Not just this game, but like. You know, like, it, it's different. Like, you start with a Sp- Spider-Man origin story. You get that out of the way. <laughs> right? Everybody, I always say that. And that's, what, like, one of my crappy articles back in the day when I used to write. I'd be like, everybody has a Spider-Man origin story. What's yours? You know, like, 
all right, so now once we get past that, it's like, like who are you? Where are you from? Like, what was that like? And yeah, where yeah. Did it, like, what did, and after it started, like, tell me what about, led like, you down this path. Yeah, like what really made you go all in? Because you know, some of these people are running. You know, let's say like like Isaac, he runs, he's running Black Hat. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like. like where did that, how did that get there? You know, like and and I feel like I feel like for me, I mean, I I'm a huge fan of Plat Hat, and I've had like all everybody from Plat Hat on my old podcast, and I just had Jerry was the actual first publisher that I had on this show. Um, okay. But uh, they used to have their a podcast of their own, and the fact oh. that they talked about like how they're starting stuff, how the games are going, how everything's going on, made me like fall in love with their just them as people so right. it, it made it even more interesting and of course when they became part of asmo day and all that stuff kind of a lot of that stopped happening but it's like i i still remember like the background stories of all these different people so then when i see their name on a box i'm like oh my friend so and so and like it's even not... if it's it's so crazy how these one-way friendships start like when you watch someone's content Right. I've talked about that a lot on this show too. It's like, hey, you watch someone's stuff from afar and you feel like you know that person already. And right. then like then you like you actually meet them in person. They don't necessarily know you, but like you already have that connection a little bit, you yeah, know the connection. inside jokes and things. That that right there um uh, is something I've like of course, like when I went to Gen Con, was that mm-hmm. two years ago, two two years ago or so, like that was me. So like I'm meeting all these people for the very first time. Yeah, yeah. You know that I watch a lot, and here I am, you know, kind of fanboying out. You know, I'm a girl man, but it's like, you know, hey <laughs> man, like I really like, you know, I like what you do or whatever, and I just like whatever. But when I came, when I was on my way there, uh huh, I I saw Kingdom Death Monster, right? I saw Kingdom Death Monster. I sold something else to go to Gen Con. Oh, yeah. So, and what I did it's was... It's definitely expensive. And then what I did was, is on my way there, I was like, I'm going to be a content creator. Like, I just decided. That's and, awesome. And then, like, you know, I'm walking all these publishers, meeting all these people that I really mm-hmm. admire reviewing and asking them for advice randomly. Well, interestingly enough, I walked, in, <laughs> I walked up to Robert Geislinger. <laughs> he makes fun of me so much because I was, like, so, like... Hi, Mr. Nesslinger. I wasn't. Like that, <laughs> whatever. He he makes it sound like I was a little boy. <laughs> Him and Z are sitting outside. But you know, two years later, here we are. You know, a lot has happened for me, and it, that same thing has happened to me. Like to have people come up to you and have this relationship mm-hmm. with you, and you know, like really wanting to meet you and mm-hmm. like admire your stuff. Man, that's cool. Like it was overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. And. I had a really hard, I didn't have a hard time with it. It was just hard to digest all at once. But it also confirmed like how much work mm-hmm. I've done to make you know people connect with what I do. Like you, you don't expect people to care what you do. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, see, you can see numbers, you can see views, but then it's like it's, it's awesome. It's not real have. until someone in person comes up to you and it's like, yeah. oh man, I love your stuff. And you're like, yeah. I'm just a dude in my garage talking right. to a camera. You know. Right. <laughs> it's like it, it's part. Like I said, it's part ego feeding because it's like, man, mm-hmm. see, yes, I do work hard. Yes, you know, like, but at the same time, it's like, whoa, like me? Like, you really like me that much? <laughs> you know, or like, like some content can be like, man, I like your stuff. I'm like, your stuff is way better than mine. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. like, that's another thing is like some people are asking me like, hey, you know, da, 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 how do you do this? I'm like, I just look at yours and go like, I can't even do that, you know, or I can't do those angles and shots like you. So. Yeah, yeah. It's just cool. That that I let you know that's like everybody's humble. It's not that mm-hmm. you know far apart. You know, some even like uh, some of the designers are, you know, reviewers. They used to be reviewers and stuff like that. So they understand us. You know, they understand what we do. So it's like I don't know. It's it just it's just very interesting how connected this all is. You know, it's I guess oh, yeah, it's because sure. of the size of the industry, mm-hmm. uh, how connected we are. And I know? feel like. Board gaming, just the act of board games themselves kind of feeds into, like, to play casual board games, you have to be somewhat civil. I mean, you get into tournament scenes and stuff like that. It's completely different. But, like, we're all coming together to try to play games together, and you have to kind of have, like, the right personality or be friendly enough or people aren't going to come back to the table with you, you know? Yeah. Um, So it's really cool to see a whole bunch of people that are – trying to woke up people in, trying to get people to come together to game, like as, right. as friends and just like all sorts of different people. Like, hey, you come over here. We've got these cool games we want to show you. I feel like this, it's like 
board games is weird because it's like self perpetuating you know it's like right. you have a board game you need to fill the four player slots you need three other people you yeah. teach them the game they like it they buy their own copy they need to fill the three other player slots so right. they do it and it just keeps growing and i mean i don't think it's it's weird because like board games you thought they would have died out by now with video games and all, all this other stuff going on but just right. the fact that it just keeps growing because we all we all want more people to play with honestly yeah I, that's it actually is proof you know, it's yeah. proof that people do want to play together. Um, and I think, uh, you know, like back then, uh, like with video games, it was always mm. like couch co-op, you know? And uh, and like that died away. I miss those there. days. I do miss those days where you just like, let's come over and like, come over and let's play Contra together. <laughs> like now you don't even need to. Or or uh, <laughs> in 60, or like uh, regular Nintendo, like the track and field where you had the A and yeah. B buttons oh, on yeah. the pad where you got to run real fast. Like, and you're playing the long that. jump, and you're running, and you jump yeah. off the pad, and then jump back on the pad. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> it, it, you, and you probably slip and fall, like just like a cartoon. Like it literally looks like you're a cartoon <laughs> character. Uh, <laughs> your feet in the air, like kind of. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I miss that. But like what I love about board games is they did two things for me. They helped me so much with like being a like that only child in me. Like I'm a solo. I love playing solo mm-hmm. games, and it. It's great for like my concentration, my mental health, like the days where I definitely need to be like kind of secluded. It's perfect for that. Yeah. And I can have that. And all to myself, big brain puzzles, and I love that. Mm-hmm. It, it's okay. Like I can have a whole night to my, my mentally to myself and I'm fine with that. But the big one is is that I also have this personality where I want to meet all the people and yeah. I want to play with all the people. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know that and I'll play with anybody, and I'll play any game. So it's like, let's just play. And I love that. I get to meet new people, um, and I, I, I want to make sure they have good time. I like to be the minister of good fun, as I always tell yeah, you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the minister of good fun. Like, let's just have fun, man. Like, let me jam you up a little bit. I'm not going to win. I suck at most of these games. So I'm just going to make sure we have fun together. Uh-huh. That's really all I care about. You know, it's a game. It's a game. Yeah, you know, yeah. We all want to win, but we should enjoy ourselves no matter what the end result is you know and that's what i'm all about how do you feel about like cooperative games when it comes to that when you just completely take the competition in between each other out of that i don't know i enjoy co-ops a lot i know there's some people that are like oh no co-ops no you know what i like co-ops because i know how to play a co-op and i feel like that's the thing it's like that make, so that takes everybody back to a competitive level. So co-ops do take people back to a competitive level because who's speaking for who? Who's oh, yeah, the yeah, natural there is leader? That. And sometimes in a game board game situation, there's a different type of leader. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, that that's the thing. Like because they may understand the functionality of board games and how certain things work, they be more maybe more strongly suited to be like more vocal in this situation. Whereas like right. if I put them in an office situation and tell them to speak, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> so it's always very interesting to see that, and I'm just good at navigating those things just because mm-hmm. I'm really into people. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, like like I said, I just want to make sure that we open it up so everybody feels heard. Um, they're having fun, and I kind of like do this kind of like psychological safety because you know co-ops are really rough. Like we're playing Spirit Island, it's gonna get ugly. We got a lot <laughs> of things to talk about. You know, like we got a lot of discussions here. Okay. Uh, before we put down one car. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you got you got to let people do what they want to do. Um, and, I mean, that's okay. Not everybody's going to be comfortable. Not everybody's, not everybody's going to be happy. But I want everybody to have fun in the end. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't ever have a problem with co-ops. I just I – just, I like them. I don't know. I, yeah. I, just like I mean, them. I guess sometimes people can fall into that whole, like, trying to tell other people what to do stuff. But I'm always – I always had the opposite problem. Like, I always want the group's input on what I'm going to do. It's like, guys, what right. should I do? Where should right. I go? I, like, I, yeah. I feel like I could make that choice myself, but I want to work together. So, hey, right. what do you guys think I should do with my turn? Um, right. I, I often just tell people, like, uh, well, like, let's say, like, we're playing, like, uh, folklore, and they'll say, hey, like, maybe we should go this way. I'm like, you know what? This is what I would like to do. I think we should do this, this, and this. And I, said, I like man, the discussion about what we should do. Right. I don't know. I like the discussion. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I want a discussion. I want you to make your choice, but I want uh, to have a discussion. Yeah, yeah. Give me your thought process. I'm going to tell you right now, you probably don't want to play a co-op with me simply for the fact that I will take probably the riskiest option ever. <laughs> like, I like to just, I just like to fight against the odds. I mean, I'm usually playing like Rogue, Ranger, 
you know, like just the most mm-hmm. mischievous, most riskiest. So it's like, usually that stuff works because I have like luck stats in my favor. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, why don't I just try it? Like, why don't I just try it? It gives me like a little tiny advantage. So why not try it? Yeah, yeah we um, played um, the new Marvel Champions. Me and Marty played it um, actually yeah. here on the channel last night. And Marty did that. He's like, I could be safe or I we could win next turn if I do this thing. But as long as we get lucky, we won't die. Yeah. Guess yeah. what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we died. <laughs> but we would have won if we didn't die. We so. won. That's it. We would have won. Were we excited about that situation? Yes, I was because I didn't want you to do it. And you you know I was waiting to flip that card. I'm like, Marty, if this card's bad, we lose the game. Are you ready for this, man? He was just like, uh, go ahead and flip the card. I'm like, uh, but are you ready? Are you ready for this card flip? It determines our right. fate. Flip it. Right. Oh, we lose. <laughs> you know. That, that, that's it. That's the thing. Like we could have got me, lucky. Because to me, that's just as exciting as a win. I'm sorry. That's like to me, that's exciting. Like it oh yeah, for be sure. Exciting. It does. It doesn't always have to be safe. Like if we're playing an action and adventure game, why are mm. we not have action? Like why are we trying to be so mechanical? And if we lose, playing that slow strategy, it might be. It might not be good. Like you want mm. it to be a little risky. If you're playing Robinson Crusoe. You gotta take some risk, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you can't be just saying like, okay, we're gonna stay here, do this, and get some more wood. We're gonna stay here. At some point, we gotta just be like, hey, we're gonna, we're just gonna keep exploring and hope we find that shelter, like oh, yeah, ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But that's what I like about Robinson Crusoe, like that that idea of like, you don't know what's coming, so you need mm-hmm. to just go explore until you get to that shelter, dude. Otherwise, you're dead. You know? Yeah, for sure. And. uh that that's one of those types of things, or like the the uh, indigenous people in uh, Spirit Island, they they, they spread so fast mm-hmm. that you gotta like it's like hey we gotta address that. You can argue all day about like building this stuff up, but at some <laughs> point we have to get a little aggro, you know, <laughs> like you know you gotta let me you gotta let me unleash here. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like I've know, been saving let, a ball game, gotta make this happen. Right, let me be the idiot right here. Let me let me do my idiot thing, you know. So. Do you That's ever go like, like all right, guys, yeah. but what if we Leroy Jenkins right now? Like, what if yeah, we just I, have fun, you know? Seriously, like, I'm actually warning you, but I'm about to Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> the people are like, Jeremy, no. Like, right. enough planning. Let's let's We're take action. We're 15-minute turns right now. I'm about to Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. How many cards do you have left? I have two cards. <laughs> I'm just going to go. <laughs> hey, at least I got chicken. Right, yeah, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be your, I'm gonna be your bullet sponge. Here I go, ding ding, <laughs> you know. So, I don't mind doing that because to me that's an experience. It sounds wild. I like that. So, mm. whatever. So, so what do you think like drives you to want to p- create like board game media content? Like, what are your passions are when you're doing uh, this stuff? Well, like I said, I like to have fun. Mm-hmm. I like to show games that I think are fun. Mm-hmm. Um, even games that have its challenges, I always feel like some people you know, will like it, and I try to make sure they have, they find a target for it. So a lot of the times when I'm talking about games, it seems like I'm in promo mode, but honestly, if I like them, I want you to know how much I like them and what they're for. But overall, I just like making content. I like knowing that I'm sharing something, helping people make informed decisions. Honestly, that's what it's all about, is making informed decisions and not just throwing your money at, at stuff. And honestly, that's what I did. And I don't do that anymore, and that's partially because we get review copies of stuff, but I also buy stuff too, and it's just, I'd rather be informed right. than anything. And like I think that's where you end up with these collections that are so gigantic. Yeah, for sure. You know? Like, you're not informing, you're just doing, right. and there's no FOMO. They'll be there for the rest of times, I tell people. Like, they'll be there to the <laughs> end of time. They will be. What if they're not? I'm like, and just play the other games that you don't have unwrapped yet. I mean, so it's like, consumers you know? are in no shortage of there being board games coming out. It's not right. slowing down, guys. Like, yeah, as I think tell about people, what you're it, buying. Right. It just depends on what you're buying. Well, Or if I say, hey, well, this game is at a premium price. Well, I don't have the money. Well, just look behind you. You have a lot of money. <laughs> you yeah. know, like you have a lot of first world problems back there. You got a lot of cardboard that's worth something. So, yeah, I, I think the, the passion behind it is is that, you know, one, it's fun. Two, I like to make sure that people are informed. And I get to play a lot of games, man. Like, I get to have a lot of different experiences. And even preparing for content is fun. You know, like, mm-hmm. I found a good gaming group. They're down to play everything. They'll play, you know, like, they'll play some games with my son. 
And then, you know, we'll play, I mean, like, we'll probably play Sky Magic next week. That's a, <laughs> that's a cute game. I <laughs> know, like, that's a game by Peaceable Kingdoms. They'll play it, you know? That's like, awesome. You know, we play Pegasus, <laughs> Flip Over Frog, and then we'll play, like, Escape Plan. And, yeah, we, I mean, we'll just play whatever it is. And I, I like that. Um, mm-hmm. I like that about my group. So that makes it even more fun. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, and they deal with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> they deal Listen, with my antics because I have. They're the real antics. party people, honestly. Yeah, they are because they really put up with me and my silliness. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can be quite the entertainer for no reason. So, uh, yeah, man, I, like overall, it's just because I feel like I'm helping, you know, mm-hmm. in some form. And I'm having fun. I get yeah, to play yeah. board games, dude. I mean, come on, man. Like, I don't know. Like, why do you do it? Like, I mean,. Honestly, like, uh, I I watch so many other content creators, and I'm a huge fan of board game media in general. Like, I like everybody. I mean, I like people on the Dice Tower. Like, I watched Tom and all the guys there, but I also watched Rodney Smith's stuff, and I watched everybody all over the place, you know? I used yeah. to I used to love um, Man vs. Meeple back when it was uh, Dragon Strikes, like, Dragon component Strikes. stuff. Like, I was like, yeah. oh, man, I, I don't even know how many times I've watched his, uh, his Mages of Madness, like, component yeah whatever it was called the the video i'm like oh man i just love all of that stuff um but i i mean i'm just a fan of the industry a, as a whole and i don't know i wanted to become a part of it i was just passionate about board game media stuff so i was like oh man let's make some videos and like right. start becoming more of a part and contributing myself and I, I think it's cool to do the whole like i don't know i i'm passionate and excited about games and want to share those games i'm passionate and excited about <laughs> yeah i um uh... What was I thinking about? I was just thinking, like, I am such a nerd, too. So I do admin on a board game reviewer site. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, like, uh, and we try to contribute stuff each week. I just became an admin. But what I always try to do, and, and even if it, like, before I was an admin, I try to contribute and, like, you know, feature these people that are out there that are just yeah, yeah. starting or they make unique content because yeah, like, for I'm sure. constantly watching other people's content. Yeah, for sure. And the reason why I do that is, one – I'm still trying to develop who I am and the things I like mm-hmm. and the things I like visually, you know, the things I like that I'm lacking in, like I'm finding, oh, I'm lacking in that. Like that's actually a better way of explaining things. That actual verbiage is something I should use instead and alter it a little bit. Or maybe I do need to pull my shot away a little bit like that. Huh. Um, yeah, or, yeah. or I could tighten up my closing, those types of things like that. And you're just like, okay. Um, and, and along comes this person that's just so refreshing and you're just like, huh, wow, oh, they just made that look easy. You know, like, it's just like, <laughs> there there are like some people out there, I'm like, man, why are they so yeah. good? Like, yeah. oh, man, you know, that charisma, and, uh, stop it. And it's like, uh, you know, it's just that's – or or they let you know there's people who I always say, like some of the people who are, you know, big too, it's like mm-hmm. – they're still big and they don't have to do big productions. They don't have to do all these like super cut. They just them. And that's right. how I started. And it let me know to just start. And yeah, I have yeah, one sure. content creator. His name is Tom Heath. Tom, uh, Tom Heath. You know, Slicker Drips. And mm. he said to me, he was like, just the iPhone 3. What did he say? He said an iPhone 3 or iPhone 5 or something like that. And he was like, that's all I had. <laughs> He's like, yeah. and I had this thing and he's like, and I just held it. Mm-hmm. And, and he was like, "That's." He's like, "Just start, man." Yeah, yeah, and for sure. I was like, "Oh wow!" He's like, "Just start." And he was like, "One of the things." And Ryan Messler, who is uh, part of Dice Tower, same yeah. thing. He's a friend of mine. He lives right down the road. And uh, he was like, "Dude, just start. Like, don't." Yep. You know, and I, that's why I tell people like, just start. And, yeah, for sure. You know, you you ask questions. You know, people are here for you. And you create your own style, and that's why I feature those people because they have their own style. They try to do different things different, or they're just grinding. Yeah, for sure. Um, or I just show people's videos and just say, hey, like, look at all the things that they're doing that are so interesting. Mm-hmm. And I like people to see those. And I also suggest if you ever want to be a content creator, I don't know why I'm getting into like, hey, if you want to be a content creator. But I. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I always tell people, like, don't watch just board game people. So oh, yeah, there's like, sure. yeah, like, like, like there a lot of the vloggers, um, like the the big time vloggers out there, those are like the people you really want to watch because they just know how to make, like, 
content that like even if you're not necessarily sure you want to watch that video listen you got to get those watch. drone shots you know like right. zooming out of the board game oh man or like their rig shots where they're just like kind of you're like how are they doing that you know like or just yeah, yeah. like what what are they doing that with so i can understand at least mm. what that is you know like what is that shot and or like their lighting and their the, the, the sideways the things that they do um and even like when they give you tips for things that you don't have that they have, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. no, actually you can just do this for 200 bucks. And then if you want to upgrade this, upgrade this, upgrade this, yeah, that yeah. helps, you know, and, and it makes you feel comfortable because like I said, a lot of this stuff uh, that I have now, I, <laughs> I just bought in the last three months. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, just I mean, you, like, I did favorite game Friday and stuff like that, uh, just on my phone completely. Like, yeah. and I, I had a ton of contributors at the time. I, I would just had Google uh, Drive on my phone. I was like, hey, everybody submit your clips to this Google Drive. I'd yep. save it all to my phone and then just get into iMovie on my phone, pop everybody in place, put little name tags. Like, I, I used to write out everybody's little lower third's name every single week wow. in in uh, on uh, iMovie. And then, uh, I mean, it, it, I did that for a while, and I actually, like, I was still doing it on my phone when I started doing it on the Dice Tower as well. So it was, it was pretty wow. crazy. Um, but, I mean, I've been doing that for, I don't know, like, three years now or something like that. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Um, no, I... But, yeah, it's, it's just fun. And, and things like that, it's like, hey, if you don't know what you want to do but you're interested in board game media, like, get into something simple. I mean, there's some of these collaboration things you can join in on where it's like hey just say the name of a game or hey just do do like a little blurb of this or that and just get your feet wet and then maybe yeah. you're like hey i've gotten a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera doing this or that i don't know how many people we've had come into the dice tower through favorite game friday because people got right. their feet wet you know like just saying the name of the game each week it's like oh i really right. like this game or hey, this is my favorite game for this and then from there they're like hey I'd like to talk more about the games. I'd like to like do this segment or maybe start doing a review so I can really show the game in depth. And now that they're right. comfortable doing this, they can progress. And like, it's just doing it, you know? The more you do it, the more you're comfortable you get with it. I th- and I think uh, that's one of the biggest things is like, everybody's going to beat themselves up. They oh, yeah, want to yeah. sound like the biggest professional possible. And it's like, you're not. You're going to stink yeah. at it. Like, And you're going to stink at it in a you're going to look at yourself and feel like you stink more than you actually do. Like people really just want to hear about games. They want to be informed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, over time they will like you. I actually had some, I had someone who's a friend of mine and, and they're, th- they're considering going into video content. They never have. And they're a blogger. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you just, I used to say this with my kids when I was teaching, I was like, you got to just stink at it. Oh yeah, and for sure. Like, and, and when you stink, I will give you the right answers. We'll eventually get to the right answers. And it's the same thing with an adult. Like, you got to stink at it. You got to take your lumps. You got to keep grinding. And then you just slowly work your way out of it. And guess what? If you're worried about views and all the other stuff, like, it just comes. And yeah. if it doesn't come, try to reassess it. And if it, yeah. your passion runs out, it runs out. Like, but don't let it run out as long as it's fun. Like you never know. Like you never know. Like you just yeah, yeah. never know. So it's like, or if you're the, you just happen to be the first person to cover this game, and it goes really well, and you post mm-hmm. the BGG, and then boom, you know, like it, it. I mean, it can happen. So, and then now if you have all these videos that nobody was watching, all of a sudden now they're watching them. So I just tell people like, just do the hard work. Um, mm-hmm. You know who, who does that? That's really a good example. of That is Stella. Um, uh, Stella and Tarant, they did like mm-hmm. they just hit the ground running. They oh just yeah, hit the for sure. Running. And they, just they haven't stopped. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they they, they keep stopped. going. And now they're going to be doing uh like uh board game like how to plays on the Dice Tower now too. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's super are. awesome. And uh, she's actually going to be coming on in a, in a few weeks as well. So yeah. hey, of course she is. Okay. <laughs> Of course. Like, okay, so I'm at Gen Con running around with my little cameras and all that stuff. Guess who's running behind me? Her. Okay? Yeah. Same, same appointment. So you have the same appointment. She's running around. On that around. grind. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, straight up. Like, it was so funny. I was just like, <laughs> I'm, like, we must have the exact same appointment schedule because I felt like at, like, three or four appointments we were at the same place. But, yeah, man, I mean, you just. You Maybe just she was just following you because she knew you had all the good scoops and she was oh, going to interview yeah, him right after you. you. got to be kidding me. She's a big timer now, too. She's a big timer. <laughs> um, is a big timer, but I mean, like they all—they both earned it. They work really hard, and the, and then that's what you want. Like people recognize people who work hard, you know. And mm-hmm. at, like I don't—I don't feel like I don't like I don't even see. 
I don't call it success at all. Like I don't, I'm not, I don't even know what that means. All yeah. I know is, is that I'm enjoying it and I've mm. had opportunities, but it's not like, I mean, I, I don't even think I have a thousand subscribers on my page, man. I just, mm. I just move stuff over there and I just move stuff over here yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and then I have this, I have a lot of stuff going on on Facebook. So I have like a big following there. Yeah. I just don't even, I don't even track that. I don't, you know, I just don't. I don't think about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I just don't think about it. I think about the people. I think about myself having fun, and I think about the cool games I'm sharing. That's it. Mm. And you know, I'm not looking to make money. There's not a lot of money. <laughs> you know, so it's oh, like, yeah. just have fun, man. Just have yeah. fun. And, and the payoff is when I meet you. The payoff yeah. is when I meet everyone else, and they say oh, I like what I do, or let's play mm. a game together. That's cool, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Amp- Somebody gets Ex- especially when they come up to you and they're like, "Hey, I know this is your favorite game. I really right. want to play it with you." And you're like, "Yes, you're yes. my people. Let's do this." <laughs> yes, let's do this. So it's like, you know, or somebody, even like a publisher, like the first time they say, "Hey, like I want you to play my game." Mm-hmm. Whoa, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, whoa. And uh, those are the moments I do look forward to. That's a payoff to me. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. So, yeah, and I'm thankful that we're in an industry, as I tell people, that you can still handshake and hug people. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of industries you can't. Like, there's just they're too big, right? And uh, we we are very much close like that, close knit mm-hmm. to our fans, like all that stuff, everything together. It's not a big bubble. It's just not that big. So um, it's just crazy because you can see somebody from a con last year that was a fan or someone that likes mm-hmm. you a lot. And you recognize me like, hey, Jim, how you doing? And it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel like, I like, honestly, all the people that come up to me, I don't want to call them like fans or anything like that. It's just they're friends with me. I just right. haven't met them yet. But right. not, as soon as they meet me and I, we talk to them, now we're both friends together. You know, right. it's that's like how, that's how I see it. Yeah. I like I hate like that's the thing. I don't like saying fans or like, you know, like that kind of thing is just like. We're board yeah. gamers. Let's talk about board games. Come over here and talk right. about board games to me, man. I like yeah. I was at Gen Con and someone's like, Oh my goodness, I'm so starstruck to like meet you. I can't I can barely talk to you. I'm like, dude, talk to yeah. me. Let's talk. Like, what are you excited about? I want to get to know you because you love my right. content and that sort of reaction is amazing to me. I mean, it's really humbling to think that someone would be starstruck about like because this was back before I was with the Dice Tower. It's like I literally do record videos in my garage. Yeah. After coming home at five in the morning to put these videos up, it's like this makes it worth it, you know? The fact yeah. that somebody enjoys it enough to be freaking out about it. Just just think about like I think like those those types of stories it's like like you just don't understand like <laughs> like I, would, I, would, I worked I work a full time job. Uh-huh. I used to bartend. I just stopped bartending this summer and I would bartend working uh, parties till mm-hmm. like two in the morning. Two in the morning I'd come home with my stuff still on, throw that yeah. stuff off, put another shirt on, sit there with my shorts on, and like shoot shoot videos. Yeah, yeah. So like three in the morning, I'm starting to finish. I'm finishing something. I'm editing something. It's four o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's Sunday. It's my only day of relaxation. And then what am I doing? Trying to clip some other stuff together, edit. Yep. It, it's crazy how much I've been work. there. It's it's like. Yeah. I can't wait for the weekend so I can work on my board game media stuff. It's like, oh my goodness, right. I gotta get this review out, I gotta get this preview out, I gotta get whatever's going on next. It's like, oh man, I gotta get it done. And yeah. honestly, it, I don't know, I just wanted to be part of doing it. You know, I saw so many other amazing people that I admired doing board game media. I wanted to join in, and uh, I think that's fun. I think it's awesome that uh, you, you feel like it feels like you have the same sort of thing going on for you now too, man. Yeah, it just. And it, and it doesn't stop, you know. It's, oh, it's yeah, a yeah. New, like, it's a, it doesn't stop, man. You know, like like I said, today I was at home, and I just needed a day of relaxation. What did I do? Uh, play test all day. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, maybe I'll shoot some video. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to return the recorder on, and I'm just going to play a bunch of games. And people can watch while I talk to myself out loud and <laughs> do all the stuff that I do and drink yeah, coffee. Yeah. So, so that's fine. You know, like, that's – I mean – yeah, that's what it takes, and mm. yeah, I mean the boxes never stop, and <laughs> the work never stops, which I'm thankful for. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it never stops. I mean, uh, you have to be the one to stop it. Just like buying yeah. board games, it's the same thing. You you have to be the one. 
Well, it's so. funny because I was I was talking to Tom about like success and being successful and like trying to do things. It's like we sometimes people get l- like just lucky and they luckily get successful. Yeah. But I'm like, but they didn't get successful by like it wasn't completely random. Sometimes people get there faster, but you have to get up and actually roll the dice to get lucky. You know, yeah, if you're you there do. doing it, if you're on the grind and you're making the content. If you don't get out of bed to make the content or don't get out of bed to do whatever you're doing in life, it doesn't matter about if it's board game media or anything else. Whatever you want to do, go do it because if you're there, then you have the opportunity to get lucky and make it happen. But if you're not getting up every morning rolling the dice trying to get lucky, it's never yeah. going to happen for you. You know. Uh, I'll, uh, I mean like I I'm, I'm, uh, work at the VA and mm-hmm. the only reason why I have that job – and this is what I tell people is because I wanted some donuts and coffee and they had mm-hmm. free donuts and coffee at the career fair that day. I was leaving <laughs> for an appointment. I was leaving the teaching gig and it was my last paycheck. I didn't even know how I was going to pay my rent the next month. So yeah, yeah. this is back in like, Oh eight. So I'm like, all right, I might have to ask my girlfriend to move in. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. And then, uh, so I, I'm going for an appointment. I actually went on a day when my appointment wasn't scheduled cause it got rescheduled, which just shows yeah, yeah. you how unorganized I was at the time. And I'm leaving, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do today. And I was like, oh, there's a career fair, and they have coffee and donuts. Nice. And so I was like, yes. So I went back upstairs, and I'm going to get my coffee and donuts. And you know I didn't get one coffee and a donut. Like, I tried to grab as many as possible. <laughs> Listen, you got to so, be on that coffee and donut grind. That's right, what it is. Right. So he said, hey, man. You know, he said, hey, are you – um this guy says he's like watching me. I'm like, oh boy, I've been seen. You know, like I'm carrying, a <laughs> I'm carrying a football's worth of donuts. And the guy goes, he goes, hey, you know, like, do you need a job or whatever? And he's he asked me, are you, you know, do you have your resume or whatever? Well, I've always been prepared for the moment. Yeah, I always yeah, tell yeah. people, be prepared for the moment uh, when you have, and if you've done the work, you'll be prepared. So I actually have my resume, my college transcripts, and a couple recommendation letters in my car in a um, in a folder. Yeah, yeah. I had 10 of them. So whenever I gave one away, I would make another one. So I always had 10. I could give it to wow. an envelope. That is definitely so, prepared. And he goes, whoa, you have that now? And I actually got a job within two weeks, which will, I'm telling you right now for VA, that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but that's how it happened. And then I got my, my, new, my newest job the same way when I was about to leave. I was about to leave the VA. I didn't know oh. what I wanted to do. And I went to go see a friend of mine. And she goes, She's sitting down. She's like, no, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want to leave. Wait, don't you have a degree in uh, a master's degree in, in uh, training? And I said, yes, I do. It's in curriculum and you know training. And she goes, we have a we have a job for you. Why don't you <laughs> apply for the job? And I was like, all right. She's like, well, you have three days, uh-huh. and there's only two people who have applied. So you're probably gonna get the job. I think you are. You know, because you're a good interviewer, right? I said, yeah, I am. And uh, yeah, I got the job. And I just tell people, like, you got to be prepared. And, like, mm. you got to do the work and you got to be prepared. And the same thing, like, you know, for, for people to even care about what I do, it's like they had to see me do it. You know, they had to yeah, see yeah. the pattern. They had to see it constantly in their face. And they had to see, like, okay, what does he look like at his best? What does he look like at his worst? Mm-hmm. How often does he do what he does? And uh, is it consistent? Like, consistency, man. You know, like, yeah, yeah. This, industry of this the reason why it has to be consistent in this industry is because we're just getting pounded with stuff oh yeah so it's like you know i still as i tell people i still have origins in my on my floor right now like i still have (laughs) still have origins on my floor i still have some gen con that has not come out of the gen con bag yet wow and then 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 stuff that is now arriving for essen because we got to prep for some essen stuff plus kickstarter stuff that comes weekly like it's a lot, but that's the thing. It's like, how deep do you want to go? You don't want, I don't know. Do you want to go that deep? Well, if you don't, then just review the board games that you have in your collection. Mm-hmm. It's a Jamie Stagmeyer rule. Like, you want to review? Review the games you like behind you. Yeah, for sure. And then, and then like, review the games you want to get rid of and tell people why. Like, that's mm-hmm. the two first pieces of content you can have. Yeah, for you sure. Know, like, or one of my favorite ones, Chris Bauer, the Bauer's Games. He just yeah. has one. It's the most ridiculous one. And I just love how brutal he is. It's so ridiculous. It's just called In or Out. Like, it just looks like yeah, yeah. he puts a stack of games up and he's just like, this is out. This is in. This is where this is good or this one failed for me. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to keep put this one out. I like that kind of stuff. Like, sorry, I could go all over the place. But, like, you can, I mean, you can create content, man. Like, 
Just take the leap. Mm-hmm. Believe in the process. And then if someone recognizes you and that's what you really care about, then just know the grind isn't going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> just know it's not going to stop. This is going to get more. You know, uh, when I join EDM, it doesn't stop. And and they stop. keep making games. They just keep on making them. I mean, Dude, you that, can't, it's, it's, it's impossible to review all the games. And trust me, my boss is trying to do it. Um, <laughs> like, if anybody's trying to do it, that man is trying to do it. But it's yeah. still impossible to cover every single game. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people out there doing all the hot games, and the hot games are awesome, and they're hot right. for a reason. They're made by good publishers. But sometimes there's those diamonds in the rough out there, and yeah. sometimes it's cool to uncover those that, I mean, maybe it's from a small publisher or somebody that nobody knows about. Maybe the production isn't as good as other games, but the gameplay is sometimes rock solid, and it's cool to find right. those games sometimes. And I, okay, so that was the thing. When I first started, that was what I was searching for. So yeah, yeah. as as I, uh, you know, like I, I had this thing back in the day, my best friend, we called it, we were searching for the perfect beer. So we would travel <laughs> all these places and drink all these beers and log them and stuff like that, right? And we would go all these places and try them. We'd go to the wherever we could go within the Midwest area and just try to find these beers, right? So I kind of treated the same with board games. It's like, uh-huh. let me find these games with crappy art, you know, like, I, and I was like very direct about it. I was like, let me find games with crappy art. Let me find games from small publishers, first time publishers. And so you're trying them. to find the, uh, the, the, the craft beer from the small brewing right. company or whatever, right. basically, so, but in board so games. That, so it, it can be kind of a fool's errand, but you know what? Like I got to the heart of it all. And like, sometimes it's actually, uh, uh maybe like a, a you know, a, a, a well-known designer, but like the publisher they work for won't publish it. So they publish it on their own. So it's like, you know, or just to you know, play test somebody's stuff. I just like to start small. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of these games that are small. They never will have a huge print run, but they're fun. They're special. Um, and not just because they're small. You know how like some people be like, just because they're indie, they're better. You know, yeah, like, yeah. It's not like that. It's just that there's so many games mm-hmm. that the ones that are, are and the one the hot are, ones are going to be covered a million times. <laughs> so right. And like... the ones that are not as hot aren't going to be covered. Like they're not right. going to be covered. That's the thing. That's what I tell you. Like it's still not going to be covered or like black angel it's it's a hot game but it's still not covered that much it's just talked about you know like that's the thing it's a weird thing it just because a game is hot or even if it's great like museum is great i don't hear a lot of people talking about it you know like and that's not a tiny design that's not a tiny publisher so Mm -hmm. it's just like i mean i I don't know i just i find that interesting i don't know i just there's so many oh quad heroes same thing mm-hmm. great game like a great awesome game guess mm-hmm. what like he talks about it like that's an amazing production of a game i i painted i, I, I painted a bunch of those guys up yeah like i, I just you know i, I just I, I it's just crazy like i like wild uh wildland same thing one of my favorite games mm-hmm. martin wallace game martin wallace yeah yeah skirmish miniatures game highest quality osprey crickets <laughs> you know like crickets i mean like, how, do, how do you feel about how fast people are moving on to the next thing it's insane like you know what how how fast people are like oh yeah that game came out like three months ago we don't talk about that game anymore you, you know what it is it's it's our problem it's our problem to, yeah. that we have to cover those things right it's like it's our burden that we one place upon ourselves and two that like People place upon us like we silently kind of place it on ourselves to say, hey, like we need to cover these hot things. We want the clicks. We want to make people know about those. The publishers give them to us to do it early. Mm-hmm. So that's our burden. Yeah. But the thing that I try to do is I try to touch these games, get them played and let people know because mm-hmm. um, they want to know, you mm-hmm. know, like they, they just want to know. That, that's the thing. Like. If I don't get to review a game, and I don't review a ton of games, I have to like lump them together, go on <laughs> podcasts, go on podcasts, talk about them like crazy, do previews. Like I don't, ha- I don't always have a ton of time to sit and review games. So what I, I, I just try to make sure people are informed. They see pictures about them, I react to them. If I see somebody, you know, posting about them, I post about it too. You know, like I just feel like that's, I don't know, I just feel like that's my. My duty. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know, man. Like that's 
You want to find the games that are already old news and still talk about them? Yeah, like I just want to let people know about those. Or like a certain publisher, like Mo Ideas is like one of my favorite publishers, but they're small. They're from Taiwan, Mm -hmm. and like, you know, a lot of people just don't know who they are. Emperor S4, if Deepwater Games never existed, and now people don't know what Deepwater Games is, unless you know what Welcome To is, and you didn't know it was by Deepwater Games. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you you just, there's such good publishers out there. That just never gets seen, and I always I started there, so I kind of know how to find them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I still like these big publishers. They they release games, and nobody knows about them. They're so awesome, you know. Or like a known publisher changes their shift, and you don't realize it. You kind of pigeonhole them, like uh, Haba's doing that now. With yeah, yeah. You know, they used to have that one family game night game. Now they have like a, several, and they're not like right all kids games so it's like and my game group was filling them big time they're like whoa this is cool you know Mm -hmm. and i like that shift but what are people going to say like it's a kids game right a lot of hobby games are just kids so it's like i like i like to have those discussions that's another thing of like board games we play the games we have those things but we don't have the discussions either you know like i like to have more of the discussions about board games Mm -hmm. um that's something I like look forward to when I come on podcasts, like discussing more games. Um, and like yeah, we're I, doing right now. I think that's how my old podcast basically started is like after we finished playing the games, we kept talking about the games. So we're like, yeah. hey, why don't we just record it and make a podcast out of it? Right. Uh, we did that for like four years. Um, then I moved away to Florida. <laughs> oh, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's just fun to find all sorts of different people to talk to these about these games with. Yeah, and, and like each each one has a different personality, you mm-hmm. know, different games, like di- like different games they play and stuff, like silliness. Like I like mm-hmm. I like going on a uh, BJ uh, board game gumbo. He could yeah, he yeah. does stuff. Yeah, and like they they play uh, all kinds of games and they try to trick me every time I come on because I've been coming on there for since I began, and <laughs> they try to trick me with all these types of games and try to stump me. But last time we played just one. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's just that, like I look forward to that kind of stuff. Yeah, we can talk about hot games, but mm-hmm. I get to hang out with people who are friends and colleagues. But we also get to do something fun together and like, and just talk, like just mm-hmm. talk games, all the bits. That's on your. That's one of the other ones that's on it. Just we're just rambling, telling each other jokes, singing our own intro songs. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just they, yeah. You have to sing your own little intros. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, but I like that. I look forward to that kind of stuff. You know, like I look forward to meeting you and talking to you. We were just talking beforehand. I haven't talked to you more than 10 actual minutes in our lives. I know. But... It's like I, I, I took your segments for crowd surfing. I'm like, this dude is amazing. And I started yeah. seeing your stuff everywhere, made sure to add you on all the things. And then I'm like, oh, man, like I'd see you at conventions. Like I need to talk to that dude. But, you yeah. know, conventions are crazy. So Right. They're crazy. And uh, like it, that's the thing. It's just that's. That's the thing. That's another payoff of just like meeting, finally meeting these people, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, and like finally meeting people who want to meet you, and mm-hmm. you're not expecting any of that, you yeah, know. Yeah. Like, like I always say, like as a content creator, that like, you're so nervous about meetings and this and that, you know, like getting these things done and checking off lists. I'm like, just go. <laughs> so I would tell somebody, just go and enjoy the convention. Like Jesus, man. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to do what we do. Like it's just camera running around, sweating it, your shirt it out. It is a totally a different thing. Like yeah, you go, like, you what? go from like, hey, I'm gonna see the new game and like play some demos to being like, I've got to do this event next, and now I've got to yeah. be at this booth for this thing. And I mean, yeah. like we run a booth. Yeah. So it's like, and That's... it's always like, okay, well now we have to create content. It's like. I mean, yeah. I'm there to create content. Oh, now I got to run. We got a live show over here. I have to be there to make sure the live show's on point. It's like, oh, yeah. now there's a meetup with that publisher. Got to go to the meetup, you know? Yeah. It it becomes a uh, scheduled thing. And I don't know. That's why I love the Dice Tower stuff so much because it's like there's not those like hot new releases. And it's really just about sitting back and playing games with people. Yeah. I mean, we have our Dice Tower like like events and stuff. It's like, oh, there's a top ten list or some things like that. But it's... It's way more chill um, than like being at Origins or at, at Gen Con where you're like, publishers new games, publishers new games. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to that. I think like we're uh, MVM, we're gonna have like a kind of a get together over uh, for like our Essen stream coming up a little bit later. Oh, nice. But, like, I look forward to that kind of stuff because it's mm-hmm. like, you know, 
you guys like when you go to conventions you get to have all your like content creators together and stuff uh-huh. so it's like you get to have those moments and then you have like dice tower events so it's like you guys <laughs> all sit together like there's a real big camaraderie right like that's yeah, built. Yeah. I, I look forward to that like at gen con it was our first time actually like sitting down and playing a game together and hanging out and stuff and like dude, that's the thing it's it just like you build your little community, you build your little tribe, you know, and you guys are just a big tribe, you know, like you got a big tribe. But like Yeah, but we we, we also want to be a part we don't want to like be like, Oh, we're the dice tower over no. here by ourselves. No. We we wanna be a tribe of the whole community right. in general. And I mean that's honestly when I started this podcast, I was like, Hey, I wanna have a whole lot of dice tower people on and bring the dice tower people closer together and Tom's like, Cool but also everybody else also. You right. need to bring on board game media people from everywhere because I really want to grow the whole board game community. And I'm like, that's awesome. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do as yeah. well. Definitely, man. I mean, that, that, I said, just it's always going to be like I said. It's just it's not that far apart because even some of us leave somewhere and then go to the other. Place, oh yeah, so yeah. It's not like <laughs> like I'm from. I was at Board Game Revolution, and then I went from Board Game Revolution to like contributing in other places. I was contributing to the Dice Tower. Meanwhile. Uh, doing different things, and then I went over to Man vs. Meeple. It's like, and then you went over to. Never mind. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh my gosh! And now I'm <laughs> leaving, and I'm going to Mythic Games. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm wow. Just, Jer- Jeremy's a mover and a shit. He's just like, he's like, where's the next run on rung on the ladder? Where's the next rung on the ladder? I'm climbing it. He's no. like, and then now I'm the head of Asmo Day, and um, everyone bow down. <laughs> we bought all the publisher companies and uh whatever man i'm not that you had to move to france to run your asmo day headquarters yeah i ain't even like that but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous all right <laughs> i was trying to say the craziest thing i possibly could I know, like, really straight up like <laughs> no um so yeah i don't even know where to go with that one but <laughs> you actually caught me up on that one but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to think of, like, what I want to do now. And uh, that's the thing. It's, uh, uh-huh. what are you? What am I doing? And mm-hmm. uh, I'm really excited. Coming off of Gen Con, new thing with MVM, all, there's still, there's stuff, not, still newness with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I still feel like I'm learning, dude. And that's oh, the yeah. thing. It's, I, want to I mean, you like, never I stop learning, of, you know? Yeah, I just, like, I think... It's just like anything in life. You want to learn something new every day. I remember somebody said, like, you're not wowing yourself, like, twice a day. You're, like, not engaged enough. And I was just like, wow, you got to learn stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I do learn a lot. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of rule books. But (laughs) 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 how many rule books do you read a week? (laughs) And sometimes they're for actually published games. Right. So, yeah, I read a lot of rule books in a week, maybe about 10, 15 rule books a week. So I like that. I, I mean, I like... Playing with my son, I have the dad to do thing. Yeah, for uh, sure. Sporadically, you know, and I just I still don't know what I am. You know, I mm-hmm. still don't know what I am, but I do like sharing this stuff with you. I'm so like happy to be on this to share that um, and let people know, hey man, thank you for you know watching me and supporting me. Um, some I see some content creators in here, and I just think to myself like these people have all helped me be where I'm at. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and you and, and Tom and everybody, it's like, it was, over, it was overwhelming. Like when I was at Gen Con, I was like really overwhelmed. I'm thinking to myself, like, there are so many people who are responsible for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I definitely feel the same. Friends. And I mean, like, in other ways that I can't even talk about, like, it's like, yeah, oh no, my goodness, no, no. No, there's no. so many. Trust me. <laughs> I just yeah. had something happen at Origins that if I did not have that person to help me, uh-huh. I would have been so stuck and yeah. I was so vulnerable Mm-hmm. And he took he took he took care of it so swiftly that I actually could breathe. Like I really yeah. like I was like, wow. And mm. didn't hold it over my head. Did nothing. Just it was just like, man, thank you. You know, yeah. and like that's what it's all about, man. You know, like we're still people. This is just cardboards and cubes, man. Cardboards and cubes <laughs> equals plastic. We are people. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, we gotta pause for a minute. That's what I said. You gotta pause. Hold on now. Like, let's push this stuff off the table. We're talking about real people. Yeah. Right? Most importantly, the people yeah. who play them. As far right. as board games you know, go. Like, dude, like the board games just bring us together. I'm talking about people, you know. And like, if you have that in your mind and your heart, you know, like you're gonna always have fun. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I'm here to play with you. Is that tell people? Here, yeah. Party people. <laughs> yeah, I'm super interested too in like how how do we 
bring even more people in and how do we bring i mean i love learning from like all sorts of different people like how do we bring everybody into this community because i mean honestly like i said i i, I have a, i'm a, i'm one player and this is a four player game i need to fill up those other three spots yeah. um I just I think, just the more things we can do to make board games look exciting to everybody and be accessible to everybody, whether it be doing how to play like like Stella is going to start like teaching people how to play games like Rodney teaches people how to play games like these can break down those walls. So you're not having to read those 15 rule books. Yeah. Cause I feel like rule books are a huge barrier to entry from the for these just being available to teach people. You know, it's yeah, it's fun. You, you also want to find I don't know, like. I just there's a one one thing that's like one separation that we're having right now is mm-hmm. like all right our hobby is growing but we also want to like reach broader audiences like people yeah, like yeah. me people of color are just lacking mm-hmm. I used to make joke I always make jokes about conventions it's like hey I'm the black guy with dreads you can't you can't miss me <laughs> I know right <laughs> can't really miss me because there's not a lot of me at the convention so it's like you know, we want to make sure we're trying to make these bridges. And what we need to do is, is just go boots on the ground. I'm sorry, I'm a military guy, I'm a Marine. So I still like, you got to be boots on the ground about this and be active. If you're passionate about it online, you got to try to find ways to do it outside of here. And maybe mm-hmm. like just start in schools. Um, like a yeah. friend of mine, Jeremy Davis, he does like a little library. You know, like people who do that stuff. I think mm-hmm. Tiffany Kyra, she does something like that too. Like just like a robotics class. Mm-hmm. You know, you do something like that, and that spurs a little mind to do what they do. You know, like the kids who get together and do Minecraft and Legos, those eventually become our leaders of our world. Yeah, for um, sure. We start early. Or even with, like, let's say you're in a small place, mm-hmm. and they just have, like, libraries have activities all summer. So guess what? If you have a board game club, I mean, even high schoolers will come there reluctantly. They got nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially I, for um... You know, like, yeah. There was a meetup at the beginning of the year with my kids' school. I mean, they're five and six, so it was like super young elementary kids. Um, I brought out uh, – we were getting ready to watch a movie or whatever. I was like, I'm just going to bring out a couple of these Haba games, and I brought out uh, Concept Kids. And I was yeah. playing Concept Kids with like anybody who would come up and play because you could just kind of jump in yeah. and out of that game. Yeah. It's like, hey, like what's this animal? Like what kind of thing does this animal do? And right. I could really tell like – these kids were super engaged with this game, and I'm sure it's a board game like not like any other board game they've ever played before. Right. And there's so many people out there that haven't seen it because, I mean, their family's seen Monopoly and stuff like that, right. but it's not necessarily accessible for young kids as much. Um, and there's just so many – there's a lot of opportunity out there to, like, show people from all sorts of different communities, like, the fun and, like – I mean, I I mean, I know it's a lot to ask of board games, but I feel like board games can bring families together. It can bring people together. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it, it, you can put down a device and even step away from maybe your Minecrafts and your things like that for a second and come together and play something, you know? You know and it'd just be really cool to have, like, more ways and opportunities for that stuff to happen, you know? I definitely agree. Um, I You know, I come from a family that's really – that was, like – into games yeah, uh, yeah my dad's side of the family is very cool like very very uh competitive so we'd have mm-hmm. like sequence charades all these types of things uh gestures stuff mm-hmm. like that and then like bid whisk and all uh, spoons like all these games we play games all the time yeah for sure and i love that and my mom's side of the family they were more car players so we played that jim rummy mm-hmm. tongue mm-hmm. all these types of different things uh but i also this is interesting i just want to let you know that this qualifies when I was a kid and I was young, we didn't really have a lot of money at all. So I played jacks. A lot. <laughs> so, uh, and I also like love Super Bowl. So if you ever want to make me happy, you don't have to do much at all. Just give me a Super Bowl. I tell people like, just give me a Super Bowl. It is like, it instantly triggers this little boy in me that just likes to throw the ball against the wall. And the reason why this is important. I feel like this is going to get out and you're going to yeah. end up with bouncy balls like crazy. You'd be like, I'm oh, fine with that. That's fine. My wife, my wife, she just, yeah, she, we have a whole bunch all over my place. Uh, but it's just because, like, and the only reason why I say that is because I like dexterity games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering. It's like, like, if you, if you grew up on jacks, like, you're just ready. Like, right. like this just, dude, like, this dude pattern. crushes in Rhino Hero Super Battle in any flicking game. Like, Pitchcar, oh, he's a master. You know, people, oh my gosh, I love anything with quick hands. I'm also clumsy, but it's funny that, like, there's, like, a dex check to that. that oh, I man, have. Spiky yeah. Dastards, have you played that? No. That's a game no. where you flip over two cards, and it's, like, pattern recognition, but it tells you which of these, like, spiky plastic things you have to grab real quick. It'd be funny to see you play that game. Yes. 
yes, I want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that sounds like a disaster. Like I love it. It, it is because because like, they didn't make the plastic. They're like hard plastic, but they have spikes. <laughs> so you have to grab the right ones, but they also hurt. And oh uh, yeah, it's God. it's intense and crazy. Do you, have you ever played that game Sticky Chameleons where you just like yeah yeah it's like, the sticky hands trying to grab the right cards? It's just a complete utter disaster. I love it. I'm like I'm so you got glad the tongues all like wrapped game. around each other. It's like it uh. absolutely ridiculous, and that is like so me. Like like I know we can do this thing where we like strategy strat it out. And we got all this man. Just give me something to slap things at and just mm-hmm. I, I like that you know and and like. Uh, yeah, I just I like those moments around the table. I like the moments like I remember. Uh, here's a quick story of like how much board games kind of really they 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 solidified. They were kind of inside of me when I was a kid. There's two moments. One, I was in the boys and girls club, and when we were in the boys and girls club. Uh, a lot of those things get donated, like yeah, board, yeah. Board games donated, and like without that, I wouldn't play Pocino, Stratego, uh, you know, chess, checkers, mm-hmm. backgammon, uh, Pocino. You know all these types of games that I just would have never been exposed to that. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like my mom, we had this really bad Christmas. We just had a Christmas where my mom couldn't give me anything. So, you know, uh, we're playing like we were playing a board game, mm-hmm. and I just can't remember what it was. I just can't. And my my mom, you know, she just was. I was my dad was gonna go with my dad, and uh, I go to my dad to my grandma's house, and apparently she had told my grandma like everything I wanted. And she got me everything I wanted. And I always say to this day, that was the worst Christmas I ever had because I just wanted to play board games with my mom. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and I thought to myself, like, wow. So flash forward, it was like a year and a year or a half ago. We're playing um, – we're upstairs playing uh, Dream Home mm-hmm. with my mom and my family. And, you know, we're playing the game. She's having fun. She stinks at it. <laughs> <laughs> so she texts me later, and she goes, you know, you remember when we used to play games together? Yeah. And she's like, I remember when we played a game and together, and it was, like, really special to me. And I was like, she remembered. Like, I think she remembered just a little bit. I think we had that moment together. Like, and I think, like, gosh, like, board games really did mean a lot at certain times, you know, like, mm-hmm. in my life and, like, it's like wow, you know, I I was away from board games for a long time, and uh, like in 2015, 16, when my uh, my father in law passed, um, my wife just a lot like allotted me some money to like get stuff that I wanted to, and I came back into the hobby, and that was awesome, you know, like mm-hmm. that's, you know, part of it is actually something that's close to me, you know, <laughs> like you right. know, like I said, this isn't just cardboard stuff back there, um, you know, so it's like. I said, you know what I was saying before, and maybe I didn't say it when we were on air. It's like connective tissue, man. Like it, I have mm-hmm. connective tissue to a lot of these things. I guess that's why I'm passionately connected to uh, some of these things that I have back here, although they can all go away because this is just games. It's not people, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not my family. You know, this is just board games. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, it just not to get too serious here, but like, <laughs> like, like it's like that's like board games. When I get into something, it really does have to mean something. It can't just be like throwing it at the wall i'm no longer 22 years old i can't do that <laughs> so yeah that's that that's that's a board game journey for me <laughs> that's my that's board game. awesome for sure yeah, yeah i'm definitely right there with you i have so many family experiences with gaming my dad got me into games and i mean he was he was an avid like role-playing game player and and board game player oh. growing up himself he, he's really big into like war games and junk like that too which he didn't pass that on to me but yeah but um but he definitely passed on like the love for for gaming and stuff in general. And I some of my fondest memories is playing games with my dad and playing games with my mom growing up and stuff like that. Playing games with my brother and it's just like all these awesome times that you can have together around the table. And those things won't be forgotten anytime soon, you know. Yeah, it's just so. like uh, and like I I even like um, I was dating someone and we were really like we were very very together for a long time and like I remember just going to her friend's house. There'd be six to eight people there, and like they would play Halo sometimes. Mm. Back when Halo was like first connect, you had to connect all oh, yeah, the computers, for sure. together, right? And then like other times, they were just like, you know what? Forget it. We're gonna play D and D. 
mm-hmm. I had never experienced it before. And like, believe me, in high school, I was such a jock. I was like too cool for it. But by the time I yeah, got yeah. to college and out of it, I was like, oh, this sounds cool. So I was like all in, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, like playing Carcassonne and all that stuff. And just like it was always there. Like gaming was always in me. It's just because I love people. I love that interaction. I love the fantasy, mm-hmm. you know, or just being escaping into this realm for an hour. And now, now it's so funny is is that like theme just barely means anything to me now. Like I just like the mechanisms of a game. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, like don't get me wrong. I like the shell of a game. I like the art of the game. But I definitely, it's gameplay first. Yeah, like yeah. it just can't. Like I, I need to be convinced that this game will be good before mm-hmm. I even like really get fully invested. Now, of course, I get to look what's inside the box before a lot of people, but it's just like, it's gameplay over everything, man. All this art and sheen. I have Valetta. It's one of the ugliest boxes ever. It's one of my favorite games. <laughs> so I tell people, like, <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I just tell people, like, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I like gameplay over everything. And it's awesome when you get an opportunity to get all of that in one box. But more importantly, have a good time with a whole bunch of people, man. Awesome, man. Well, I think we're going to draw this thing to a close. Is there anything else you want to shout out or um, tell anybody about before we, we oh, end this thing? No. I, dude, I could talk uh, to you all night long. We'll have to have we'll have to come back around. There's too many people to talk to. Like, I honestly, I, I could just have you on every night. Oh, don't worry. I won't be on for five years. All right. <laughs> no, no. You better be back on tomorrow. <laughs> you will be old and weathered. You'll have half the hair. You'll have this side right here. I'll be interviewing be the president bald. of Asmo Day, a.k.a. Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be bald-headed with a scar down my face. <laughs> speaking perfect French. <laughs> yes, it's speaking perfect French. No, uh, well, I, you know what? I'll do a little bit of promo. The only promo I'm going to do is, um, yeah, I'm with Man vs. Me, but I like to come see some of our previews. Of course, you can see that on YouTube. But mm-hmm. more importantly, I have Solo Sundays with Jambalaya on Sundays at 3 p.m. CDT, mm-hmm. uh, where I play a solo game each week. Uh, sometimes I'll have them vote for, people vote for them. They're not sponsored as of yet, so you don't have to worry about, like, hey, is this guy being influenced by anything? Absolutely not. I just play the games that I like. <laughs> Uh, this week is Donning the Purple. They have an expansion coming out uh, that's on Kickstarter right now. So I figured I'd warm up that game. I happen to like that game a lot. And then the next one is pretty much People Pick. So I'm going to rely on everybody to pick my game. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of selections because I have a ton of solo games to play back here. Uh, but, you know, I just – that's it. I mean, that's it. You can find me. Jumble Live Plays Games Community. You can find me under Jeremy Howard. I'm not hard to find because I just post everywhere. <laughs> and uh, – I just yeah, I mean like find me. I don't I don't care about that. I, I don't. I just want to hang out. And nice. That's what I want people to understand. I don't like it's not about a popular thing or whatever. I just want to hang out. You want to check out games? You probably want to follow me. That's what I tell people. Like if you want to check out a bunch of games, and at listen, least follow. Me. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a party person, so you better join right. in. Just be a party people, man. Come here, hang out. Click on it. <laughs> go away from it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I just want to have fun, man. So join me. Yeah, join me. Join and be part of people, man. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody who stopped by, and thanks, everybody. Um, if you have any questions for Jeremy, you can leave some down in the comments below. And uh, make sure to check out all his stuff. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, no. You can also check this out on iTunes. If you search for Spaces Between, you'll be able to hear the cool. audio there. And, of course, it's going to be going up on the Dice Tower channel um, next Monday. It's currently live. And then... Tonight, if you're watching it on the Dice Tower currently, um, and the Dice Tower group, I'm going to be interviewing Mark Streed. So, oh. well, I'll see you around. Hey. Bye, everybody. Hey, Keep take real care, party party people. people. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.